This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Our project boat for 2016 has a lot of cushions that need replacing, and we've been diligent to make a tutorial video for each of the irregular shaped cushions for this boat. In this video tutorial, we'll show you the steps required to make a cushion that sits on a backer board in this area. The old cushions and dark carpet desperately need replaced, so they are being removed. After our project is complete, the cabin of this powerboat will be bright, cheery, and fresh. This cushion has a backer board because underneath is a storage bin. This cushion project is part of Sayerite's 2016 project boat on a Regal Ambassador. Cindy will walk us through the steps required to build this cushion. First off, we'll start by cutting the foam. We'll be using the foam to make a pattern to make the cover. Uh, we're ready to work on this cushion for Brian's boat and uh, the foam on this original cushion is three inches. We want to use four inches, so we're going to replace the foam. Sayerite recommends two types of foam for boat cabins, dry fast foam or high density polyurethane foam. Both foams have advantages and a few disadvantages. For more information about foam, click the link at the top right corner or contact us via email or phone. We're glad to help you pick the right foam for your application. We're trying to use up our smaller pieces of foam, so we've glued a piece in right here with a general trim adhesive. And um, it's okay to glue in an angle like that, it'll still work. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to trace around the foam to get the new foam uh, shape, but because of this wedge back here, I'm going to turn this over and trace the larger side first. Anytime a cushion or foam has a wedge, the large side has to be patterned first. Then the wedge will be cut after the foam is cut to size. Sayerite carries a few different types of professional foam cutters. Here we're using the AccuCutter 350. You can also use an electric kitchen knife to cut this foam. It cuts easily with that. In fact, we're going to use the electric kitchen knife to cut the wedge. Okay, I'm going to mark where, the, where I need to cut the wedge in this piece on the back. You can see that it's shaped back here. So I'm just going to go down from there a little bit. This isn't a real extreme wedge. And I'm going to do the same thing over on this end. So then my wedge will be cut like this all the way across this part of the foam. Describing a line across this edge where those two dash marks were put on the side will give us a guiding line enabling us to cut the wedge out using our electric kitchen knife. The foam is up against the edge of the table and the knife is two. Then the knife is guided along the line struck along the top or bottom side of the foam to create the appropriate wedge do this only on a sacrificial table. Okay, when we had this on the boat, we had all the cushions in there and we marked right here where the center of the pattern is on the fabric. So I want to transfer that to the foam and then we'll use the foam to pattern our fabric for this piece. Because we're using a fabric with a decorative pattern, we need to pay attention to matching up the pattern when making the top plate. Now to get the match for my next cushion so that it, when it butts up right against here, the pattern is continuous, I'm going to use a point on this fabric where I can measure down to my seam. So I'm going to use the end of this design right here and measure down to my seam. And that is one and three quarter inches. So I'm going to find the same point on the fabric over here, which is right here at the bottom of this design, and measure down one and three quarter inches and put in a pin. That's my seam line, so I need to add a half an inch above that for seam allowance. So that's where I'll start the pattern for this next piece. Because the cushion has a, this wedge in it, um, I want to use the Duraskrim patterning material to trace the top of my cushion so that I can lay that right on my fabric and cut my pattern or cut my fabric out. We're tracing on top of Duraskrim pattern material so that we can see through it so we can line up the pattern of our decorative fabric. We're tracing around the foam with a Sharpie marker on top of the Duraskrim pattern material. We're marking the large side of the foam so its top surface was facing down. I want to mark the other side as the right side so they don't get confused when I lay it on the fabric. With the right side facing up, we'll transfer that mark. 
Now with my pattern on the top side of the foam, I want to transfer this mark right here onto my pattern where the center of my pattern goes in the fabric. So here's the center of my pattern in the fabric and I want to pull it right up to this top pin where my half inch seam will be. And I can pin it down and cut it out. We'll be cutting this out with scissors just because we can go around the pattern quickly. However, if you use a hot knife like the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife, the edges will not unravel. Because our cushion has a backer board, we need to cut boxing this extra wide to wrap around the board. On this piece, when we bring the boxing strip down, we want it to come all the way up to this board on both sides here. Um, so I'm going to make the distance that I pull around a little bit longer than normal so that it stretches all the way over to here and I have a little bit to turn under so it's a finished edge. Here's a look ahead at what Cindy's talking about. As she pulls the cover in place, she wraps the fabric under the edge and staples it in place. So if I measure the board and the foam, it's about four and a half inches. I need to add a half an inch at the top for a seam. So that is five, and I know I need about three and a half inches to pull under the bottom and meet that support board underneath there. So I'm at about eight and a half inches for my boxing. Here's my top plate for the um, piece that we're working on right now, and I want the band to match all across this bottom area. So to figure out where that matches, I'm gonna put a pin about a half an inch in. That's my seam allowance and then another pin on the uh, fabric on the bottom. And then I need another pin about a half an inch up from that. And this is where I will cut. This is where I will sew. And then this piece will match the band boxing. We'll use the clear acrylic ruler here and line it up with that last pin and make sure it's straight across the pattern of the fabric and strike a mark on the fabric. We'll do that along the entire width of the fabric. Then we'll measure over the appropriate distance for our boxing, being sure we have enough to wrap around the board and staple in place. For us, we're doing eight and a half inches. I have my first strip cut and it's going to um, sew on right about there. And you can see as it comes around this side of the cushion, it's not going to be long enough to go all the way to this corner. So I'm going to cut another strip that's identical to this so that I can match it right here. We need enough boxing length to go all the way around the cushion. For us, we need to actually cut three strips, not just two. In most situations, when joining boxing, you don't typically worry about the pattern. Here, it's almost perfect, but not quite. We're going to still sew it together here. So since it's not going to be exact, I'm just going to stitch it right there. We'll sew a straight stitch about a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric, joining up our strips of boxing together, reversing at the beginning and the end to lock the stitch in place. Up next, we'll be making piping to match our fabric. This is an optional step for those who want piping. We're ready to cut the bias cording for our cushion. We're going to put bias cording around the top plate of the cushion. And to find the bias line in the fabric, I'm going to line my ruler up on the selvage of the fabric and fold the selvage up to the ruler. And this will be my bias line. And then I can use the rotary cutter and the mat. And I need my cording to be an inch and a half wide to get a half an inch seam. Um, that will vary depending on the thickness of your fabric. We mentioned earlier that we were going to use a half inch seam allowance to sew this cushion together. So we want the flange or tail of the piping to be a half inch when it is sewn together. Cindy has determined that with the piping choice and the fabric selection, she needs to cut this bias piping to one and a half inch so that the tail will equal one half inch. It works better to cut this on the bias because it has a little bit of give and it goes around the corners better. Um, it doesn't have to be cut on the bias, but it does 
go around your cushion a little bit nicer if it is. And I'm folding this up just so it still fits on the mat and I can cut it all in one piece without moving anything around. She'll cut several strips, hopefully enough to go around the entire perimeter of our cushion. Then later on we'll sew them together. To sew the multiple strips together, first the outside surfaces should both be facing up. Then Cindy will explain exactly what she'll do to join these two strips together and the others. When I sew these pieces together, I also need a bias cut here where the two pieces go together. So I can also use the ruler to get that cut and put my 45 degree line here and cut the ends off of these. And then I'm going to flip the top one and put them right sides together and leave a little ear on each side. And where I'm going to stitch is right at this from angle to angle, right across there. When joining sections of piping together, typically we don't worry about what the pattern looks like. And I'll do that with all of them before I go to the machine. We'll be using the world's best portable walking foot sewing machine, the Sayerite Ultra Feed Sewing Machine. I'm going to make the stitch a little smaller on this just because this is such a short seam. Um, it has a tendency to pull out and I'm not going to back stitch at each end. So I'm going to go ahead and make my stitch kind of small for these uh, short seams. To sew this Giabella fabric, we're using a V69 polyester thread. This is a Derby Navy. Sayerite sells many colors of polyester thread. Check them out at sayerite.com. We're also using a size number 18 needle. A size number 16 needle will work just as well with V69 thread. This Giabella fabric available from Sayerite sews easily with a home sewing machine. Other fabrics are also available that are great for V-birth cushions. Now to make the cording, lay your piping in the center of your fabric piece and just roll it over. And the foot has a channel in it that will carry the piping through as it stitches. So I'm just going to roll my fabric over and try to keep these two edges as even as possible because this will be my half inch seam. And I can use a longer stitch length for this. I'm going to hold the piping in the center of my fabric and just guide it as it goes. Fold my fabric over and try to keep these two edges even because um, this will create my half inch seam. And the foot has a channel cut in it that's going to guide the piping through it. So if I hold it back here and just keep everything in place, the foot's going to pull it through for me. The Sayerite Ultrafeed sewing machines have a cording tunnel built into the standard foot. If you use another type or brand of sewing machine, you may need to install a cording foot. And then when I come to a seam, I want to fold that open um, so that it doesn't have so much bulk. And the reason that I want to cut these seams on the bias is because when it folds over, then it doesn't fold over on top of itself and it's not quite as thick in those areas. We picked Sayerite's medium 532nd inch welting cord. It's a polypropylene material with a uniform thickness which is very soft and takes bends very well. Now that the piping is made, it's time to sew it to the plate. I'm ready to stitch the cording onto this piece and I want to put it over here on the where it's at the side of the boat where it won't get much wear. So I'm going to start back here on this corner and stitch the cording on all the way around the perimeter of the piece. I'm going to start stitching a couple inches from the end of this so I have room to finish it off when I get back around to this side. And if I line up the edge of my uh, bias with the edge of my top plate, I'll have my half inch seam. When sewing piping, when you originally make it and when you sew it onto the plate, it's always a good idea to try to match the thread color to the fabric that's being sewn in place. That way, when it's turned right side out, if the thread shows up, it's not so obvious. At sharp turns, or almost 90 degree turns, we like to make one slit in the flange of the piping which helps it to take the turn. Then we bury the needle, lift the foot, roll the fabric around, lower the foot, and then continue to sew. 
If a gradual corner, one that does not turn sharp, is reached, we like to make several slits all the way around the perimeter of the curve. That helps the piping to lay flat and take the curve very smoothly. Now I'm back at the point where I started, so I'm going to leave this piece where, that I'm still stitching on about two or three inches longer and cut it off. And then open up the stitching. Pull the fabric away and then snip off the um, cording inside, even with the cording where I started. And then fold this diagonally around the bias and tuck the starting piece right back in there and fold it over and then you can finish stitching. The next step will sew the boxing onto the plate that has our piping in place. I'm ready to attach the boxing to the top plate and I'm going to use um, seam stick for that and apply it to the outside edge of the cording on the top plate. I want to keep it away from the seam line so it doesn't get caught in the seam or show when I'm finished. And I'm not going to sew this end until I go all the way around. That way I don't have to have an exact measurement. I can just um, attach this piece and finish it off when I get back over here. The quarter inch size of this seam stick basting tape for canvas is perfect for applications like this. It keeps the glue away from our stitch. Using seam stick for canvas to baste the boxing on will help us to line up the pattern so that we're assured that our pattern will match perfectly to the top plate. The seam stick is also an aid for those who do not sew cushions professionally though it is always a help for anyone that does as well, especially for patterns or for irregular cushions. However, for people that are novices, I definitely recommend using the seam stick a quarter inch for canvas for your upholstery or cushion application. The pattern's matched up perfectly, and we know it will not move on us. We'll go ahead and baste around the entire perimeter now. At gradual turns, we'll cut a few relief notches into the boxing, no deeper than our seam allowance. For us, that's a half inch. These notches in the boxing will allow the boxing to take the curve smoothly. At this corner, we're coming to a almost 90 degree turn. Here, we'll cut one relief notch into the boxing. Again, no deeper than our seam allowance. We're gonna skip ahead to the end where we need to join the boxing ends together. Here, Cindy will explain. I'm gonna leave that little bit of seam stick covered up and stop stitching right here so that I can finish off this seam after I get all the way around. There's a little bit of excess fabric here where the boxing was joined together. Cindy will cut that off. Now that our boxing is basted to our plate, we can take it over to the sewing machine and sew it in place. The tunnel for cording or piping is built into the standard foot on the Sayerite Alterfeed sewing machines. So she will guide the piping through the tunnel, placing that stitch right along the edge of the piping as she sews this boxing to the assembly all around the perimeter. We've skipped ahead to the part where we need to join the two ends of the boxing together. We still need to go around this corner and there's not a relief notch placed in the boxing, so she does that now. So so an inch past this corner then shows what she does next to accommodate for the boxing ends. When I get to this corner, I'm only going to stitch about an inch up and stop.
put a clip in those two pieces and then you know where that seam needs to be. Once you know where the seam needs to be, I strongly recommend pinning the fabric so it doesn't move on you when you take it to the machine to sew it. So we'll pin it on this side of the boxing and the opposite side of the boxing. Now we can sew it together along that slit that she made in the boxing. And then you can stitch straight from that clip. She'll try to keep this stitch 90 degrees to the edge as straight as possible along the end here. If you want to, you could strike a line. Now we have boxing that's exactly the right length to go all the way around the cushion. We'll cut off that excess. And that makes your band long enough to finish that piece. But we don't need all this extra here. We can cut that out. Be sure to always leave at least a half inch beyond the stitch as Cindy did there. She peels off the transfer paper of the basting tape that was left over. Then she'll sew the remainder down. No reason to do any reversing as long as you start an inch or two over your first stitches. And then finish stitching that area. And no reason to do any reversing at the end as long as you sew past your first stitches. We could just paint the back or board or we can cover it in fabric. We're going to use cushion underlining fabric. These are the two boards that we want to cover with the cushion underlining. So decide how big I'm going to make that. I'm going to push it up against both sides, make a pencil mark over here. And um, the strip doesn't have to be cut exact. Just cut a strip so that I can staple it in there. These fabric strips will be used to cover the backer board's wood ridges that help guide the seat and keep it in position over the opening it is used on. Cut a slit in here. They will simply be stapled in place. The decorative fabric, which will wrap around the board, will come up against that board. And also we'll be installing a cushion underlining in the center as well. So these edges will not be visible. Cindy's going to cut some slits into the end so that she can make it almost like a gift wrap package at the ends of those ridges. In lieu of covering the back side of the backer board with fabric, you could just repaint it because it is not typically seen. However, we decided to cover it in fabric, or in our situation, cushion underlining material. We have these two pieces all covered with the cushion underlining now. In this area here, we'll also get cushion underlining on it, but first I'm going to put the um, fabric and the foam on the other side. Now that our backer board is prepped, it's time to staple in place our cover with the foam inside. First, we'll stuff the foam inside, being sure that the right side of the foam is facing up. We'll start against one of the long edges here and staple it near the center location. Since we used piping, we want that piping to be slightly visible as we pull the fabric taut. Notice Cindy's pulling the fabric and then stapling. And if you take a look at the piping along the bottom edge of the tabletop down there, it is right at the corner of the foam. That's exactly where we want it. We're using the Easy ETC-08 staple gun. This is a pneumatic staple gun that takes a half inch crown staple. Typically for upholstery applications, the length of our staple leg is 3 eighths of an inch. Now we'll concentrate on the other long side. Oh, here she's going to talk about the seam. This is important. I'm trying to get in here and pull this seam down towards the boxing. It always looks a little bit nicer on the top of the cushion if you can get the seam pulled down all the way around. If the seam is not pointing down towards the boxing, that's not the end of the world. However, it does look best that way. We're going to start in the center of this long side now that the other side is stapled down and install one staple and then inspect our work. Is it pulled tightly enough around? You see that I still have a little bit of a, full, a fullness here and I want this cording to pull down a little bit farther, um, snug all this up a little bit. So I'm going to take that staple out and move that up a little bit farther, tighten it up. First she uses the tack and staple remover. 
Then she uses wire cutters to pull the staple from the fabric. Again, our goal is to have the piping writing along the corner of the foam on the top side. This better. looks much better. Now that we know what we want, we can go and finish the rest of the edge by stapling approximately every inch or less. To tension up the fabric, she rolls her hand from the top side down to this bottom side, holds the fabric, and then staples right into that edge, against that ridge. The EZ TC-08 staple gun is a very cost-efficient pneumatic staple gun that works quite well. We're using stainless steel staples here to help avoid the possible rusting that may happen if you use galvanized. Here at the edge of this ridge she's making a slit that will allow her to roll the fabric along the edge and then pull the fabric past that point. Remember a cushion underlining is going to hide the majority of the fabric on the inside of the ridge. Here we're concentrating on the other side. I want to be able to finish this end of the board nicely um, with the fabric because my cushion underlining is only going to come out to here. So I'm going to cut, this seam just happened to fall right in this area. Um, I'm going to open up this seam. If the seam were not here, we would simply slip the fabric at that location over top of that ridge board. And then put a diagonal cut out to the corner of the board. This is the end of the board. You'll see it here soon. of all that extra fabric. Cindy cuts this flush, mainly because we're going to have a cushion underlining fabric on top, but it could have been rolled under as well. Now the cushion underlining will come along this side to finish off this edge. In this edge, I'm going to turn under like I did the front edge. She turns this edge under because no cushion underlining material will come up to hide that edge. So turning it under gives it a finished look, even though you do still see, see the staples. Here's a corner. This is a rather gradual corner. Watch what she does here to accommodate for the excess fabric. There are obviously multiple ways to make this corner look good, but Cindy's approach is a pretty good one here. She creates a fold so there are two tucks and at the top those two pieces go together. This looks pretty good. A nice looking corner without having to make any extra cuts for the excess fabric. We'll show one more corner. Watch what she does here. Little different approach. Still looks great. Now here the cushion underlining is cut to size and stapled on the center of our backer board. Now when I put the cushion underlining on, I want it to cover up this area right here. So before I staple anything down, I'm going to make a slit right here so that that part can go towards the front. 
and we'll turn it under like that and staple all the way around the outside edge. But I need to trim this off and I'd rather do that before I attach it. So I'm just making a crease in it with my fingers and then I can cut along this creased line and trim that off. This edge could be folded under if she chose to do so. However, she chose to staple it in place and cut the edge instead of folding the edges under. If you want an even more finished look, you could fold the cushion underlining edges under and then staple. However, this is not the most important side of our project and the cushion underlining fabric does not unravel, so it's fine the way Cindy chose to do it here. Simply staple it in place and cut off the excess as straight as possible. This cushion on a backer board is now complete and ready to be used. Thanks, Cindy. Coming up next is the materials list and tools that we used for this specific project. You will find hundreds of great upholstery fabrics at Sayerite for your next cushion project. Check them out at www.sayerite.com. If you have questions about our fabrics, foam, and much more, be sure to give us a call or email. We are glad to help you pick the right materials and tools for your next DIY project. Click the playlist here to see more projects done on the 2016 Project Boat. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.